snapshot for those of you who are not aware of my career. In 1977, I attended my first National Speakers Association convention. At that point, I was traveling nationwide speaking for a hair product company, speaking to hairstylists on how to promote their business, which grew out of my hair cutting demonstrations. Because I know it will surprise you that when I was demonstrating hair cutting, I could talk constantly. The other stylists would cut hair and then explain what they'd done. I knew even if you are going to a hairstyling show, you want to hear more than just what you're doing with this angling. And I would give them sales ideas and promotion ideas and how to sell more product ideas. And that became so popular that the company extended that. Because I was the star of Dale Carnegie and Toastmasters, my executive clientele, so one, start where you are. We heard this from my brother. Start with the people who know and love you. You need to get an audience. Doesn't matter that they don't pay. And my executives, I was talking to, I'm speaking with, oh, you need to come to my Rotary Club, Kiwanis Club, Lions Club, Optimus Club. And out of those first free engagements, and I was giving my best sort of talks that I designed, because in Dale Carnegie, they teach you how to stack your ideas, how to organize your results. I always had notes, but they were in here. My hairstyling clients loved me and my personality. They thought I wouldn't be bad. I was always better than they expected. So while I was at the Rotary Club, what you do in any circumstance you are, you look for more opportunities and you go talk to the visiting Rotarians and you say, uh, if you like my speech, would you give my card to your program chair? Because in any organization, the program chair is the toughest job. How do you get a free speaker next Thursday? If it happens to be you, and it cannot be a promotion, it can't be a commercial, it can be about your expertise or your industry or your interest. Has to be a value. However, somebody else introduces you, you have the opportunity to collect cards. I would give a drawing for a free hairstyle in my salon because I wanted somebody to come in. So the next week when they went back, everyone said, hey, you went to Fripp's salon, let's look at you. So this was a great way for me to promote business. Out of these free engagements, people came up and said, what would you charge to say that to the Oakland appliance dealers? First time I heard that question, I said $50. Second time, somebody at the San Mateo Rotary Club said, what would you charge to talk to school administrators about goal setting. Well, I learned $50 an hour and travel time. They said we pay $125. So I attended my first National Speakers Association convention, 1977, two years into a 10 year lease on my salon, outside of hairstyling earning $175 thinking no one's going to want to talk to me. I only talk to hairstylists and rotary clubs. And two magical situations appeared. One, I saw the vision of what was possible. I was smart enough to realize this is a long-term goal, but when I am 40 years old at the end of my lease, perhaps I could make my living as a speaker. Don't quit your job, have the vision. And then I used speaking to promote my business so that we didn't need my income to cover the bills while I was the staff were developing their clientele. Because my boss, Jay Sebring, who was Hollywood's hairstylist, 
I realized when I saw him interviewed in Time magazine, Newsweek, Playboy magazine, quoted by our local columnist Herb Kane, I realized it doesn't matter how good you are or anything, the world has to know. And that's when I really became a shameless self-promoter. <laughs> now in those days, it would be go to Harpoon Louis, flirt with the cute guys and give them my business card. Now we would call that networking. In those days, it was maximizing what I had. I was young and cute and flirted. But that's how I built my business between networking and speaking. Often, I get asked the question, how did you get started building your business? And I'd say, if I'm giving you one question, that is the wrong question. Because the leading edge of technology then was the best yellow page ad. We never dreamed about content management systems. We never dreamed about the internet, email, Facebook, Twitter. So hear this loud and clear. Whether you are a novice, intermediate, or advanced speaker, there has never been a better time to promote yourself for free. However, there has never been a tougher time to get noticed in the clutter because everybody else can take advantage of YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And that is why the advice is, one, maximize the context you have. If nothing else, if you're a novice speaker, tell everybody on your Christmas card list, I am speaking on, invite me. Two, as you'll hear from Darren, build your list. Whoever would be interested in hearing from you, Build your list, build your contacts, build a way to keep in touch with people. Build a Facebook, business Facebook, yeah, certainly LinkedIn because that's professional, and YouTube. All great, easy ways to get started that are very cost effective. And then, as you've heard, even many of our members, you what was not available when I first started, look for the partners who can, one, help you get noticed, give you the information and advice that you need to get noticed, help teach you how do you follow up and maximize the opportunities, and help you appear to be even more established than you might be at that moment.